There's so much to say, it's hard to know where to begin. Miranda, so much of her personality was being an attorney. And so she was decidedly unglamorous at the beginning of the show, and then she became more glamorous as it went on, and then certainly in the movies and all that stuff. Hi, I'm Danny Santiago, co-costume designer. I'm Molly Rogers, co-costume designer on And Just Like That. I'm Cynthia Nixon, I play Miranda Hobbs. I am also an executive producer and a director on And Just Like That. And, and this, this is, is how, how we, we did it. it. Miranda, she is the character who had the most evolution. There's been this sea change that's happened since we've checked in with her. Her marriage is barely treading water, and so she's kind of given up. Her hair color had changed, and she had changed careers. So she's 55, but she's a student again. You know, everybody else is 18 or 23. And then she becomes infatuated with Che Diaz. They're a celebrity. They're a comedian, they're famous, they're non-binary, and Miranda's very attracted. You are not progressive enough for this. So I think that there was an enormous amount of playing with the clothes. Also, once that happened, Miranda becomes more girly than we've ever seen her. During prep, Michael Patrick King gave us such explicit detail in their character arcs and what they would be doing and going through. So I feel like that guided us when we were starting to outfit them. Vintage, I think, for the show has always been something that's been used. And we brought it into the films, and we also now bring it into this show. Let's try. This belongs on our show. We have to wear this for something. This is And Just Like That, episode 106, Diwali, written by Reshna Frumpham and directed by Cynthia Nixon. Cut. I was going like a train, right? So then in the middle of it, Cynthia very quietly said, you know, make your point. Why can't people just stay who they are? Ask me again. Why does everyone have to suddenly change who they are? I love directing, and I'm gonna be directing again in the next season. Your episode, I wanna say, was the only one that took place in fall. Yes, yes. that's And that yes. was important that to the costume the department. Yeah. You know, that's the episode where Carrie goes to this very chic but austere plastic surgeon and considers having plastic surgery. We got you maybe a couple of times in for a little show and tell, right. possibly, in right. my memory, right. um, where we could show you groups of people that we had fit. And after years of being an actor, you know, it was fun to have those conversations. All well, my family in India always tells us who live here yeah. that we're like 10 years behind, that we're so out of fashion. We kept hearing that. You guys are way, way behind us. It just so happened that Indian Fashion Week had happened and we watched it online. So we pulled those experimental fabrics in because we wanted our audience to see different things. In Seema's family's home, it's such a contrast to the sterile, austere, chic, white world that Carrie is flirting with and considering. It's color and family. Yeah, you saw soul yeah. mm -hmm. in that party. There were many traditional things that Sarah Jessica was attracted to. That's not cultural appropriation, that's cultural appreciation. Wow, that is really great, because I just saw one back there that I really culturally appreciated. Seema wanted to belt hers. You want to do the modern yeah. side of it. Yeah. Rechna, who wrote the episode, she couldn't be there for the Diwali scene. So she said to me, I need you on Jasmine alert. We can't have anybody looking like Jasmine from a lab, you know? So I did go to a couple of people. I was like, I think we got to take that tiara off. I'll blame that on the hair department. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> For LTW, it's bold. She loves color. We loved playing with accessories with her. We had so much fun bringing in all these big, bold accessories. 
with Naya. We started pulling together a lot of street style, mixing sportswear, had a lot of fun playing with different types of sneakers with her. And there's Seema. Seema. She said everybody always wants to put her in a hot color. And she was just so excited to be this neutral cappuccino. Yeah, she said to Latte. me, she said to me, who but sex in the city would think to put a brown girl in a brown dress? <laughs> she was so. In a brown, in a chocolate car. And it just works so well with her character and she felt it. She went right into that character. Michael Patrick King told us that Shay should be sexy. And I don't think anything portrays that better than black. You can walk into almost any store, probably anywhere in the world, and a salesperson will say, I think this top would look good on Miranda. <laughs> it's very important to us after the fittings to look at the pictures of the three of them, especially together, because we do like art direction and we do like them to look cohesive, like the three musketeers. Maybe there's a better analogy. <laughs>